Welcome everybody to Liverpool Street, Central London. And those are the two titles that will be on the line on the 31st of March at the O2 in London. The British and Commonwealth titles are heavyweight. Fabio Wardley defending them, the challenger Fraser Clark. And these two squared off in the ring on Saturday at Wembley Arena before the main event between Joshua Batsy and Dan Aziz. That got pretty interesting pretty quickly. They came into Sky for the gloves are off on Monday and I'm told that that got quite spicy as well. And Matt Macklin, who's with me, we want more of the same today, don't we? Because this is being billed as, as, as bad blood. Hopefully we'll be bathing in it in, 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 in a few minutes' time because there is some feeling between these two. We know what happened with the first bids last year. Not far off a year ago, this was first mooted. There was all sorts of back and forth on that occasion. These two got plenty to say to each other. And added to that, it's just a really good fight. Both good talkers anyway, both good lads, um, both good fighters. Um, but inevitably, when something happens like the purse bids scenario, things are going to get said. You know, every action has a reaction. When someone says something negative about you or you feel like you get defensive, you fire back and before you know it, it escalates and then there's bad blood there now. Uh, you know, oh, it's called bad blood, so I didn't, I didn't actually just make that up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but, but that's it though, isn't it? Because, yeah. I mean, you, you, you know, you, you were a very, very proud fighter and, and if anybody had ever questioned your minerals or your desire to, to get in there and fight anyone... It's, it's almost the worst thing that can happen, isn't it? And with Fraser, that, that's what happened to him last year. People were looking at him, and Fabio's brilliant at just twisting that knife the last yeah. few months and saying, listen, I wanted to fight. You know, your people decided you were, you know, I was too much for you. I, you, yeah, you weren't ready yeah, for me, yeah, you know. Then, <laughs> oh, it's, it's the worst thing, poking isn't it? The bear. It's the worst thing, though. Yeah, oh, totally. Listen, as a, as a fighter, your pride is, is what, it's got to be one of your most important uh, attributes and, uh, and and Fraser, proud man, and rightly so. But all, everything he's achieved and he's gone in, he's shown guts and courage. For then someone like you say to be kind of antagonising you, pro, uh, poking you, questioning it, it's gonna, it's not gonna get a good reaction. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> or, or, or it will get a good reaction if that's what you're looking for. Well, well for us, it yeah, gets yeah, a great yeah, yeah, reaction, yeah, yeah. And, and it is an example of. <sighs> although at the time it seemed like a bit of a catastrophe. Now we're further down the line and the fight has been made and it's built that little bit more because yeah. Fabio won that Commonwealth title as well in Saudi against David Adley. Um, Fraser's had those extra rounds that Boxer wanted for him. All of a sudden now, it's a bigger fight than it would have been a year ago. It's headlining at the O2. Bank holiday Sunday, Sunday afternoon boxing. That's going to be an interesting one. But I think the runway into it starting today, it could really gather some steam, this one. I think so. Uh... And that, a natural fight, a fight that was always going to happen. And like you say, it is, it, it is probably bigger, a bigger fight now, probably a better fight now too, because I think both of them have improved over the last 12 months. They've had that bit more seasoning, that bit more experience. Uh, there's a bit more needle to it as well. It, it is going to be a bigger fight. They're at the O2. I think it's going to be a great fight and a great night. And these two are coming to boxing from opposite ends of the spectrum because Fraser, of course, had that long, very successful uh, elite level international amateur career um, culminating in that bronze medal in the Olympics whereas Fabio had four white collar fights then straight into the pros he's actually never lost Fabio yeah. in any form of fight because he was undefeated in white collar undefeated as a pro I spoke to him about it a few months ago and he said in a way it's a bit of a weird feeling because you're kind of you're not waiting to lose but every time you go into camp you know you know I'm rolling the dice again here and this is the biggest role he's had because this is you know, it's a huge profile fight. Massive, and you do think that, like, on paper at a glance, or, and probably this is a lazy analysis, but you would, you, the first glance, you think, well, Fraser's a massive favourite, you know, Olympian, he's had all those fights, boxing on GB for the years, WES, WSB, Wardley's come through the white collar, you know, then had a few opponent, you know, hand-picked opponents to give him a bit of experience, like, you know they're, true, they're polar opposites you know, as you say and the experience and everything is, is totally with Fraser but then actually Fabio is probably more experienced than seasoned as a professional over the longer distance so it kind of balances it back up a little bit and, and he is every now and then you get people that uh, come through in a very unusual way but what we do have is, what we do know with Fabio is he's athletic he's got good timing good distance he can bang and he's full of confidence. Like you say, he hasn't beat. He's ne he doesn't know what it's like to taste defeat. So he's full of self-belief. He is, and, and stylistically, 
it's really interesting this too because Fraser's got those rock solid fundamentals uh, from all of that time at that high high amateur level Fabio's quite unorthodox for heavyweight he's, he's not the biggest but, but as you say he's very athletic he throws punches from strange angles but he's got it would appear to be a proper pair of naturally heavy hands on him so the clash of styles it's not one that you normally see in this weight division no, look Fabio's you know, he doesn't have that amateur pedigree, the background, the experience, or years and years of boxing. But he has got athletic ability. He's got explosive power. He's got desire, guts, all those sort of things. Things that, you know, you, you can't teach. You've either got them or you haven't. You know, Fraser, you, you know, you, I'm not saying this, but you, you could see how someone would argue that he's almost stayed in that amateur system too long and he's very textbook. When someone's textbook and they do what they're supposed to do, it's easier to read them. Fabio doesn't have that. He's, he's kind of like developed his own style, you know, from sparring around the gyms, sparring with professional fighters, almost a bit more of an American style, a bit looser, a bit more fluid. You know, Fraser's quite upright textbook, you know, boxing, so... It, 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 is, it is a fascinating clash of styles. But that, that technique, is, it's taught for a reason, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you know, sure. A, a successful technique is one that works by mm. definition, but that technique is taught for a reason. And he's a big unit. He's got a solid jab. He is no stranger to the big occasion, having been to the Olympic Games. So it, in that sense, they're kind of on, on an equal footing. I mean, what do, you, what do you expect we'll get today? Because they went at each other and the gloves are off. I haven't seen it yet, recorded a couple of days ago. They had a nice little chat in the ring on Saturday night. Fabio, it seems to me, and we know him from his first time around on, on Sky, we followed him. You know, we don't stop following fighters just because they're not boxing on Sky. What he's always had is the ability to, to sell a fight and to really understand the business. I think he will fancy his chances of riling Fraser up a little bit here. Is it important for Fraser not to rise to that or do you just think, you know what, I'm going to go with this, I'm going to let my blood pump? I don't think it really matters today. I think when it comes down to the night of the fight, you don't want to be fighting angry. You want to harness that aggression and, and be controlled. But um, well, if, if Flair's up today, that wouldn't be the end of the world. We'd certainly enjoy it. Um, I, I get the feeling that um, Fabio feels like he's got one over on, on Fraser a little bit because of the purse bid situation a year ago and I think he knows that Fraser was embarrassed by that and I think he keeps prodding him on it but what was your feeling about that at the time I mean I know it's it's water under the bridge now and I'm not wanting to get into the he said she said whose fault it was and how it happened necessarily but just from the outside looking in and we touched on it before but you would really have identified with the situation that Fraser Clark mm found himself in there because early in a pro career it's not exactly what you want is it no it, but but the, the situation happened where he was in a purse bid and i just think that he he should have took the fight i thought you know he was it's different if it was he we talk about your early stage of a career but he's you know he's 30 years old or 31 i don't know is he now he's 30 31 so he's not a young kid fraser clark he's very experienced albeit as an amateur but he's also had uh, WSB experience which is like they're like professional fights yeah and against good fighters so you know the experience level you know Clark's the more experienced guy and I thought a year ago that, that they should have took the fight and in the interim period I mean in a sense not that much has changed I mean Fraser has got more rounds in as we mentioned but 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 Wardley's also kicked on as well so mm. I think in terms of in terms of where they stand in that regard it, it's it's almost as you were. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Like you say, they've, they've both improved and developed and gained a bit more experience. So it's still where he was a year ago, really. And it, it just goes to show too, doesn't it? You know, you, you think about the interest we had at the weekend in, in Josh Boatsy against Dan Aziz. This is another domestic fight. You know, this is for the British and Commonwealth titles, which, which are big, big titles. But two fighters who know each other, who've got that bit of history, who are from the same place... It works, doesn't it? Oh, you know, this, this is what, as fight fans, we all love, as we describe it, a domestic yeah. dust-up. Saturday night, what a fight. Brilliant brilliant night, great main event. Uh, lived up to everything we hoped it would be. Um, 
I think this will live up to it. I think this will live up to people's expectations. I think it'll be a great fight, a great night. I got asked before about the possibility of um, what did I think about Dalton Smith and Adam Azim? I said, fight. Why not fight? It's a European title. I mean, they both could go on. It, there's no given that either will go on and become world champions at any point in their career. I think they both will. Or, or, I think they'll both challenge for world titles. Certainly, you know, whether they win it or not depends who's around at the time who the champions are. But what I'm saying is, them fighting each other, whoever loses, that doesn't mean he can't then go on and be, fight for world titles or become a world champion. And it's a big, big fight now. Get it on. Yeah, I mean, what Matt's referring to there is purse bids were called by the, the EBU, the European Boxing Union, for Adam Azim, the champion, to defend against Dalton Smith. And I think those bids are due by the end of the month. The initial reaction is, uh, as, as you said, oh, that won't happen, it's too soon. But why not do it? Why not do it? That's another brilliant fight it's, for British boxing. Exactly. It's, it's back to this. It's back to this one and, and the purse bid situation. Get in there, fight each other. It's not, whoever loses, it's not the end. You, you're going, whoever loses is going to improve a lot from that fight and his profile is going to grow. You know, um, look, Nigel Benn lost to Michael Watson for the Commonwealth title. He got stopped in, I think, the sixth round. What a career he had after that. You know, he, even personally, I can speak from my own experience. I lost to Jamie Moore for the British title. Everything I achieved in boxing was after that. It didn't, you know, and people still talk about that fight. So I think when these fights come together in a purse book, Bid, purse bid situation I, I don't I don't understand this mad desire to jump away from it I think get it on it's a great fight whoever wins wins whoever loses he's lost that fight but it's not the end of his career no look at Dan Aziz yeah. look at Dan Aziz last Saturday that was, that was a good performance I spoke to Buddy on the way out of the ring Buddy McGirt and he said yeah really proud of my man he'll have learned, he'll have learned an awful lot from that which he absolutely will have so we'll, we'll wait and see what happens with that just a quick word on Ben Whitaker because he's here today. He had this moment on Saturday that everybody hopes for. He went about his business in the way that he always does and he always has. But this time, it just captured the attention. ESPN picked it up and put a clip out on Sports Center in the United States. All of a sudden, Ice Cube's son is tweeting about it. Of course, Stevens is tweeting about it. Over here, everybody's going crazy about it. He's just exploded, hasn't he, over the last three or four days in the way that, as I say, all athletes hope they will, and you give yourself a much better chance of doing that if you do what he does. And that's why he does it, you know what <laughs> I mean? Exactly. Because he's actually, when you speak to him, he's a, he's a really nice kid. But, you know, it wouldn't... People that watch him that don't really like that style probably hate him. I think probably want to see him get beaten. But they're talking about him. You know, love him or loathe him, they're talking about him because he's... He, he, he provokes that kind of reaction, doesn't he? You know what I mean? Some people love that flash stuff. Some people can't stand it. But, but, but everyone's got something to say about it. Yeah, 100%. And, and he'll be looking at the top of the bill last week. He'll be looking at a fight like this and thinking to himself, domestic rival, you know, get me a domestic rival. I'm sure he'd love to fight on this show on, on March the 31st. You know, get me that kind of contest that, that I can really sink my teeth into like we've got with, with Wardley and Clark. Well, well look, I, I don't think Joshua Boatsy, that was an eliminator, I think it was a final eliminator yeah, with the WBA. World title. So really he's going to want a world title fight. That might take longer than they'd like because obviously Better Biev and um, Bivol are fighting each other. They've probably rematched clauses, I'm guessing, in those contracts. So those are the belts tied up for a, a period of time. Now, what does what does Boatsy do? Does he does he does he fight Yard? Does he does he come for some big domestic fights? I, I, I don't know, but I'd imagine the British title will probably become vacant again. Now, whether Dan Aziz wants to go back in again for that, uh, whether Ben Whitaker can get himself into the mandatory position to fight for the vacant title, if I was Ben Whitaker, that would be my short-term goal: is to become British champion at the, in the fastest possible way. He's got the ability. You know what I mean? He's pretty, he's got the ability. You can see that. He, he's he's getting a few more rounds now. I, I think he, I, if, if I was looking after him and he became vacant and he was there for it, I'd put him in with it. And it's, it's just been an interesting few days, hasn't it? Because we did the gloves are off live last week. Uh, we just brought actually a down disease. If you're going to cut your teeth on that kind of enterprise, they're probably the right two guys to choose because yeah. you'd be confident they're not going to start hitting each other over the head yeah, with chairs yeah, because you yeah. don't, you know, as much as we joke about wanting to see that stuff, there's a limit, you know, there's a yeah, line yeah, that yeah, you don't yeah. want to go across. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> had a really good night on Saturday and it was used as well to announce mm. this one so you're kind of rolling on to the next mm. thing Whitaker captures the headlines that, that he did and he's here again today to get in front of the cameras I think there's maybe a greater realisation now across all platforms that this is show business with blood that's what it is boxing and people want to see characters yeah. and they want storylines and narratives mm. that they can mm. that they could follow through and get into and that's always been the case you know there's um there's, there's ability and there's marketability and there's pe some people are more marketable than others and some people become marketable as their career evolves and, and, and plays out. You know, they might have a really exciting... They might not be the most exciting personality, but they might be great to watch, really exciting to watch. You know, some people might be the other way. They might not be the most exciting style-wise, but they're a real character outside the ring. You need something to, to sell to the casual fan. We're going to watch every fight. We're going to watch every fighter. And we will watch a purist that will we'll, we'll get excited about what appears to the casual as a boring fight. But to become a star, you need something that crosses over to the casual fan. Yeah, that, that's exactly what it is. That, that, that's exactly what it is. We were talking about it on Saturday, and we weren't laughing about it because it was in the wake of Carl Weathers, who played Apollo Creed, passing away. And, and I was saying, what, you know, what an amazing job he did with that character. But there's a generation of fans who grew up watching Rocky. And for fighters, I can tell you, Rocky is real life. <laughs> they think Rocky is real life. They, they credit Rocky Balboa with having that record. But... but <laughs> You know, that showbiz that, that surrounded those films and the way that things were done, OK, the fight sequences are a bit far-fetched at times, but everything that goes on around it, you know, that is the business. Yeah, you know, the, 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 there's, there's life lessons to the Rocky movies, moral of the story, that definitely apply to boxing careers and life. But, um, yeah, look, Carl, with, you know, he's probably based on your, your, your Muhammad Ali type, wasn't he? Flash, hands down, goading, talking this type of thing and you know I'm, I'm just in oh. apparently I'm just jumping in <laughs> okay. sorry mate it's all right. yeah Gordon what did you say well, I was going to say Rocky Balboa is probably more like your Rocky Marciano type <laughs> yeah so Spencer Oliver Cl Clubber Lang was uh, you know Mike Tyson <laughs> exactly exactly, exactly. They, it translates I don't know where I've come in or how I've come in on this but <laughs> anyway we, we, we want to assimilate you seamlessly um we're here for the announcement of this fight obviously we were just having a chat about the weekend and about Whitaker and a few other things that have been going on but the conversation we were just having basically was just tapping into the fact that it feels like at the minute everybody really appreciates and understands the need to to be able to sell yourself in this sport the need to put yourself into these big fights mm. this is a fight that people want to see and yep. that's one of the main reasons why these two have, have signed up for it listen we, we live in a world now a world of entertainment and that's what it's all about and you need entertainers and I think what we found out on Saturday night was that Ben Whitaker is an entertainer and he's a great talent and yep he's going to be a marmite people love him or they hate him but you've got to appreciate the talent and how good he is and where he can go. And like I say, you know, like, like the younger generation will be loving what they saw of Whitaker. And, you know, you know what he's like off, you know, out of the ring or off camera. He's a lovely guy. He's a humble guy. But he's an entertainer. You talk about in the young Nazim Hamid and, and people like that. You go, people didn't like that, you know, when, when he first started. But when you recognise that actually this guy can fight, sit back and enjoy it, man. And I think that I a, that's where I, we're at. My mum had a cousin. Irish, uh, you know, lived over here years from Ireland, and he used to, he used to come round our house always to watch the boxing. He was so mean he wouldn't buy a telly. You know what I mean? <laughs> Loads of money, but anyway, loved the boxing, and he used to, he used to come down, and he absolutely hated Prince Nassim Hamid, but he would not miss one of his fights. That's he was the point. oh, That's and all he, all he talked about, he was consumed by him. Do you know what I mean? And everyone that boxed him, this fella's definitely going to do him now. That's it. And he, Mate, when, when, when people are, you know, they're flamboyant and they're flash and what like, like, you can go back to the days of like Muhammad Ali. He wasn't liked in the in the early days, you know, when he was Cassius Clay. Oh, that's a really good point. He was not liked, but no. now look at him. Now he's like a boxing. He's the biggest boxing icon. He's big, one of the biggest icons ever. Yeah, you that's know, people that. learnt, to, you know, learn to appreciate him. I think that we've got that with a young. You know, Whitaker, I think it's important that we get that. And I mean, this fight here is a great fight for for many reasons. You go like Fabio Wardley with a white collar background and 17 fights, 17 wins, 16 KOs. People have doubted him through his whole career. And that Nathan Gorman really, for me, was a coming of age fight for him. And then David Adelaide last time out, again, he's, he proved that he belongs at that level. Fraser Clark, who's got that extensive amateur pedigree, 
look, this Matt will tell you better than anyone, right? That amateur boxing, professional boxing, two totally different things. Yeah, Fraser's got that, you know, that, that pedigree, but we've not seen him deliver in the professional ring yet. Only had eight fights. He actually becomes the quickest ever to win a British title, heavyweight title, if he wins this fight. I, I was saying as well, Spencer, you're, 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 you can back me up on this. You, the, I'm not saying it, but it could be said that he stayed amateur too long. Absolutely. That he's in that system and he's very textbook. Yes, well scored, but because he's so textbook, it's quite predictable Matt, because he, yeah. he does what you're supposed to do. Absolutely, and Matt, what we haven't seen from him yet, that he's going to have to deliver in this fight or he's in big trouble against Wardley. Is Wardley, we've seen, can go through those levels, go through those gears. We haven't seen that with Fraser. You know, I think the, the test for him was when he went in against Marius Wack, that giant of a guy, you know, that you think, right, this is your opportunity well, here Wack to just showcase. Survived, didn't they? Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but also Clark just he just coasted. plateaued through, like yeah. he just coast, coasted through. Last time out against Dave Allen, you go, come on, step it up. Let's see the injection of pace, the injection of gears. And we haven't seen that from Clark yet. He knows he's got to do it, and he talks about it, but can he physically do it? Mm. If he doesn't do it against Wardley, then he's in trouble. Like, and and that's, the, that's the fascination of this fight. I mean, it's a great fight for many reasons. Like, Wardley's proven, Clark isn't, but Clark's the one that... You know, it has should be more proven Absolutely. in one way. Absolutely, but you're right. That was the amateurs, and it's different. Yeah. Okay. Well, the top table is is slowly filling up. Fabio Wardley, Fraser Clark are both taking their seats. Ben Shalom just about to <coughs> sit down as well. It started slightly later than we thought. I don't know if there was any shenanigans going on behind the scenes. I hope so. I'm always a fan of that. Andy Scott will be chairing proceedings as usual. Fabio Wardley just posing for a few photos. Those British and Commonwealth title belts on the line. OK, let's go over to Andy now. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are just going to start the press conference now, so if you are doing any interviews at the moment, uh, if you could wrap them up. Shut up. Uh, I'm sure that you're going to want to focus your attention on the top table here. So any interviews that we're conducting in the room, if you want to carry on with them, if you could take them outside, just so everybody's Hello. got their maximum attention on the, uh, on the gentleman alongside me. Well, thank you very much for coming down to the Andaz Hotel here in Liverpool Street today, fast becoming the home of all the big uh, announcements for big fights. And make no mistake, this is a big fight. We have a grudge, we have a rivalry, and we have a history. Now, in April of last year, the British Boxing Board of Control ordered these two to fight. It didn't happen. A purse bid brought British boxing to an absolute standstill. Pandemonium ensued. Other routes were chosen, knowing that one day, or hoping, that these two could meet again. Well, that day has now arrived. Now we have that fight. On Sunday the 31st, so that's Bank Holiday Sunday, Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark will headline at the O2 Arena for the British and Commonwealth heavyweight titles live on Sky Sports. The champion, the pride of Ipswich, with a less than traditional route to the top, showing that a stellar amateur career need not be a necessity. The challenger, who made Burton on Trent, swaddling coat proud, an Olympic bronze medalist, the Olympic team captain, ready to get moving in the pros. It's all set up perfectly. We've had Joyce and Dubois, Joshua White, Fury and Chisora, Lewis v Mason, just some of the great contests we've had for the Lonsdale belt. And this one has all the ingredients and the potential to match them. Let's go straight to the fighters. I will bring in Ben Shalom, but let's bring our fighters straight to the microphones. So let's go to the champion with his attire. Is that merchandise now available to purchase? <laughs> it will be after the presser, yeah. Avo available to purchase for everyone to buy and wear on fight night as well. Did you think this fight was going to happen? I had my reservations, definitely. Um, I wasn't always certain. Um, obviously, with what you previously mentioned and how things went before. Um, but it's done, over. The purse bid gate was, was an eventful time, but that's all over with. And finally, everything's over the line. We're here, and a big fight on the cards and a massive night to headline the O2. Set it up for us. Just why are you so confident that you retain those two belts? It's self-confidence and self-belief all the way through. I've always backed myself um, on how I carry myself into fights and training, preparation, just 
grit, determination, as you've seen in fights where I have to. I know I've got the skill sets to beat anyone that comes at me. And, and for me, Fraser Clark is just another one of guys on those lists that has some attributes that are, that are good, that I will give him credit for, definitely. But I have a lot more that are a lot better than his. You did label him there, though, as, as, as just another one. Um, <laughs> what are your feelings towards him personally? I don't have any negative feelings towards him personally. Look, we both want to smash each other's heads in. That's going to happen on the 31st of March. I, I think he's a, a good guy. I think he's a pretty decent boxer, but it's too soon for him. He's not ready for me. In the pro games, I know people make them very obvious comparisons between amateur and pro, and that's going to be the, ob the obvious narrative all the way through this. But I just think I'm too much for him. Fraser, the challenger, welcome. Pretty exhausting negotiations, I would have thought, that date back into, well into last year. Now you finally got this man in your, in your sights. You're sat at the table with him. How confident are you that those belts are going to be shifting over to this side of the table? Yeah, super confident, Andy. This fight is one that, you know, I wanted back then. Um, everyone that knows me knows that. I think the fight was, even though the purse bids were cancelled, the fight was still offered to Fabio. Um, and it seemed to go up in the air. But now we're finally here. Like he said, you know, I think the new age of boxing, there's a lot of talking, a lot of shenanigans go on in the circus, but I'd like to think myself and, and Fabio are two people that, you know, we want to do our talking in the ring. Is it too soon for you, like he says? Absolutely not. Um, you know, I was, I was thinking earlier about pro professional fights, he's had more than me, but... You know, anyone that knows boxing, and a lot of you will like to say, a lot of people like to say, you know, amateur boxing and pro boxing is different. Granted, it certainly is, but the last six, seven years of the, of the uh, amateur game that I was involved in, with the WSB as well, it was brutal. Probably more brutal than, than professional boxing at times. Um, so, you know, I believe I've bridged that gap. That's why I'm here after eight fights. He's a good fighter, but he's a good talker as well. And he's got the T-shirt on today. Uh, your reaction to... Oh, what's that? I'm not even seeing it yet. Stand up. That's it. Who's your told? Uh, Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Oh, yeah. Avanta, you know, um, the, one, the one thing that Fabio possibly can beat me at is um, the internet uh, beef, you know. Like I say, he's one of this new era of uh, heavyweight. He walks around with a fancy camera crew and, uh, you know, make his little reels for him. He's great at that, you know, the online stuff, he's fantastic at it. And it's, um, it's even entertained a, sm a, full, sm uh, a few small minds here today. But um, listen, it's all about what happens on the 31st, you know, all, all these shenanigans. When you've been around as long as me, whether that's in a boxing ring or sitting on the side of the ring, you see it all and uh, you become accustomed to it. I think it was mentioned in the, the gloves are off, which was one of the best I think we've recorded and can't wait to start getting some of that promo out there. But uh, one of the narratives was very much the amateur background that you have. Um, you're very uh, popular on the amateur circuit, go around and talk to a, a lot of clubs and stuff like that. Uh, do you bear the responsibility of amateur boxers that you can't lose to someone that didn't have an amateur career that came up through the white collar route? You're smiling because I, I know that this was a, a key part of the discussion. Do you feel that pressure that you're representing amateur boxing as well? No, I don't feel it as a pressure. I feel it as a privilege, if I'm honest. Um, I do believe I win this fight, and, and when I do, I think that'll be the reason um, parents send their kids to an amateur boxing club instead of, like, you know, 16, 70-year-olds with, with no bottle and don't want real competition. They just want to go and, uh, you know, have a punch-up in, um, in a random social club, sell a few tickets and become the talk of their town, you know. My amateur boxing took me around the world and, and put my name in, uh, in good places. Um, you know, that white collar boxing, it does its bit of a charity and whatnot, but ultimately it's just the oldest kids from the town having a scrap um, for a bunch of Asked him. No way. Um, every interview I've done, you know, I've, um, I've taught Fabio Wardley up and rightly so, I'm the underdog here. You know, I think he's done fantastic. Um, considering where he started to where he is now, you know, you have to say it's probably one of the best journeys to a British title that, that we've seen so far. So, um, applause to him and his team and what he does. Um, I just back myself, Andy, the same way I have since the day I started boxing, I always back myself. Do you believe that he thinks that this is a done deal? 
Um, I, don't th I, don't think he's, I don't think he's arrogant enough um, to think that it's a done deal, no. Um, I'll, give him, I'll give him the credit to think that he knows there's a challenge in front of him. And he's got self-belief. Um, he's got confidence in himself. Like I say, his, his amateur pedigree and, and those WSB days will give him that, that confidence to think that, like he said there, he thinks he's, he's bridged the gap in the pro game. So I don't think he'll take me lightly at all because I think he understands as much as he say there is, it's not a pressure, it's a privilege. Two things can be true. It can also be a privilege, but I think it is a lot of pressure on his shoulders. Because on paper, like he says there, I'm just... I'm just the white collar fighter. I'm just the hardest bloke in the town who knocked out a few pub fighters, and somehow I've, won, I've, I've winged my way to winning a British title, a Commonwealth title, and I'm at the top of the stage somehow. So all the pressure is on him. He's the Olympic bronze medalist. He's the ABA guy. He's the one with the pedigree that should beat me. So when it comes that he doesn't, where does that leave him? In terms of the fight itself, it didn't happen originally, and he's had. Uh, Marius Vac and Dave Allen in that interim. Do you believe that that's going to make a difference, that that is decent enough preparation and experience? Has that uh, made any difference in your thoughts at all? No. It's not, it's not, it's not good preparation in the slightest. The best thing you can, you can take from it is that he got 10 rounds out of it. Him and Marius whacked through three punches around each, so I could do 80 rounds of those. That's not really a problem. I think you need to be in there with, with good, ambitious level competitors, people who, who want to try and win, who are there to try and take your head off. Um, and I don't believe that Marius Wack nor Dave Allen had any, any ounce of ambition in them and any ounce of really fight or athleticism about them to really want to try and be game and grit and win the fight. They were just there, I think even by his own admission, he knows they just turned up for paydays. Is he the best fighter that you fought as a pro? Or will he represent that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, again, I'll give him that at least. He's, he will be my hardest test to date. Technically, he's a very sound boxer, very switched on. I think in, in situations where maybe previous opponents have potentially been flustered, I think he'll be conf confident and composed enough to manage situations. But ultimately, I still believe I, I get the win. Do you believe that there's anybody on his record that you wouldn't have beat? Um, absolutely not. You know, I think... I think his actual his, his best wins aren't even the names that have been mentioned. I mean, I, I go back on his record and I look at um, tough tough people like the fellow with the um, the yellow beard, Latte Richard La 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 No Latte, no party. I, I think that I think that's a good win. You know, I, I see the names on there. You know, your Molina. Take from it what you will. You know, we're talking we're talking in the Marius Wack and Dave Allen um, sector of, of fighters, really. Um, so I do rate what he's done, but um, I would absolutely do what he's done, and he could never do what I've done, and, and that's that's the fact of it. Um, so many people have tried, so many people um, never got there. Um, you know, when we both, when we both look back at our credentials after our career, I would have gone and done what he's done, been unbeaten, become British and Commonwealth champion. I'll just have that, that extra thing, you know, beforehand, um, the Olympic medal and all the accolades. Do you know uh, where you would rank in terms of fastest to a British title? No, I don't really care. You, so you would be the fastest. Does that shock you or does that back up his point that it's too soon for you or you're confident that the eight fights that you've had is, is, is enough? It backs up his point, absolutely. You know, it, it is quick. Um, but coming into the pro game, um, I knew it would be quick. You know, like Fabio stated to me um, the other day in Gubbs are off, I'm an old man. So um, you can put pressure, like, pressure, you can say pressure's on me because the amateur background, you don't want to get beaten by an old man. So, you know, I think there's pressure that applies to both of us. Let's bring in promoter Ben Shalom. A few more grey hairs than when you started in terms of getting this fight done. It's been a long, long time coming. Uh, now it's over the line. Are you pretty happy that you get to finish this chapter of the book? Yeah, I think it's, um, it's been nearly a year since that initial purse bid. It was a fight that we always wanted. It was a fight that we did always want to make. I think the fact that Fraser Clark's going to be possibly the fastest ever British heavyweight champion says a lot about how quickly he has moved. The same people saying that he ducked him are the same people saying it's too soon now. Um, but you can't win in boxing. I think the, the fact is, it's a new generation of heavyweights. That's what I'm most excited about. You look at the Dillian Whites and the Anthony Joshuas and the Tyson Furies and where they're at right now, at the pinnacle, at the end of their careers, 
You want the new blood. You need the new names. So to get it at the O2, to get it on the 31st of March, to get it headlining the O2 as well on Sky Sports, that's where it should be. And that's where both of them earn the most money. It's where both of them are going to benefit off for the rest of their career. I'm delighted to have delivered the opportunity for Fraser Clark, but equally Fabio Wardley gets his time to shine as well. So it's just a huge fight, a huge domestic heavyweight fight, and that's the most important thing. I'll invite you to uh, address each other. Um, will you tell Fraser how this fight ends? <laughs> it ends like all my other fights have ended, with my hand raised and him flat on the back. I said, I said this to him when we did the gloves are off. I've said it to him whenever I've been asked the question as well. That Look, he'll be game, he'll turn up, he'll want to he'll scrap and he'll want to fight for it, but I think he'll just find out on the night that he doesn't have enough fight to get through me. Roughly translated, I'll take, I'll take loads of jabs, loads of right hands, you know, eventually um, we'll, we'll bank on Fraser getting tired. After I've took a few more jabs, I'll then do this thing that Fabio Wardley does and just unleash hell on everyone. Come in, swinging, losing his shape, um, trying, trying to take people out, which he's done so far. Um, but like well. I say, you know, um, I'm here to break the mould. I, I, I do applaud what he's done so far. I just want him to know and his team to know that, you know, he's in with a different kettle of fish. What was it that you said there? It's worked so far. I said it's worked well so far. All, all of those tactics have worked well so far. And don't get me wrong, he's got a few different skill sets, but they'll work all the same on him as well. That's what you hope. That's what you hope. Um, we'll see, won't we? You know, like I said, you know, we're here to try and, you know, sell the fight. But unfortunately, I'm not like the other, the other clans in, in boxing in our days. You know, I'm not going to throw a glass at him or chuck a table at him. I just say how it is. I feel I'm the better fighter. He's the champion. I give him respect for that. Like I said before, I've got a lot of respect for his coach. I just hope one thing. You buy my pints after my British title win, like I brought your first pint after your British title win. Cheers. Do you believe that you win this fight by knockout, Fraser? Absolutely. I'm training so well, feel so good, um, confident or, already at these early stages. Um, we plan to win by knockout, you know, the same way he does. Um, this is why I think this is such a good fight. You've got two people colliding with, this, with the very same mindset. You know, um, Fabio never wants to see the final battle. He wants to get work done early. And uh, again, in the gloves are off. We both stay, you know, we don't get paid for overtime. Um, two heavyweights want to fight, want to entertain, and I'm sure we will. Who is the bigger puncher of the two of you? Me. Yeah, I think that much is obvious. I think you can see from my record on the bigger puncher. There's, there's people on his record he hasn't even stopped. So... Who, who didn't I stop? Who did I go to points with again? Sokolovsky. That's the, I think that's the one I went to points with. Camille, yep. Camille. Tough guy, you know, hard head, full of drugs. Um, so... <laughs> No, pro probably not. But other than that, I think I've done an all right job. Obviously, he flattened. Who did he flatten? He flattened Gorman. Everyone. Just say everyone. Sure yeah, you know what? Yeah, you know what? Just he, say everyone, he's, man. He's a sure puncher. Then. He's a puncher. Um, but he likes to state the fact that you know he, he's he's already beat class amateurs. Have who? Simon Vallely. He was good. Class amateur. Nathan he was good. Gorman. Class amateur. Stop saying Nathan Gorman is a class amateur. Stop saying that. He, he wanted, probably won a junior a, ABA title, probably got a bye to the final, might have even got a bye in the final, and they give him the trophy. Come on, GB, for a little bit. That sounded did, very did, similar did, to your Olympic run. Did, did, didn't, didn't want to do the hard work. Uh, my, Olympic, uh, my Olympic bronze, no, that was fought for, mate. That was qualified. He starts in the qualification, so I won my three bites oh, there. You got a bye in there somewhere, didn't you? A bye, a Eight win, days. and a disqualification. Uh. Yeah, but we got there in the end. Just like your journey from the white I'm, colours to here, you got there eventually. That's, that's, an, interesting, that's an interesting run. Who, one, one win and you got a bronze medal out of it. Two wins. OK, you count the DQ if you want. Two wins. Count the DQ if you want. Win's a win, mate. <laughs> yeah, a win's a yeah. win. A win's a you'll win. You'll find that hurt. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, by, by any means. <laughs> a win's a win. You by take a means. DQ as a win, that's mad. But all right, cool. Go on. Who do you think has got the better or higher ring IQ? Oh, behave yourself, Andy. <laughs> IQ, he, 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 just, he has a swing up, has a punch up. He does what he does what people do outside the pub on a Friday night. He does no, he's been he's gone to Ben Davidson now, so he's you know he's he's got someone who's good in his corner actually, who, you know who's actually teaching him to box a little bit, and he's probably getting a better understanding. 
I, you know, I like the little cute thing you did against Adelaide, the shove off and the hook, you know, big applause for that. I've been doing it for 10 years, but no, well done. You disagree with that? No, nah, to be fair, he probably has got the higher IQ in terms of time in the ring and learning from obviously massively experienced coaches and the scene that he was on and being around them, probably, yeah. But it's not just about that, is it? It's no, it's, not it's, just a, it's about a fight. It. It's, it's not fight. just about the it's IQ. A it's a fight at the end it's of the fight. day. You're absolutely it's about right. about who's got the dog, who's got the heart, who can swing it out, who can, who can really grit through in certain moments where who wants to quit out, who wants to take a knee, who, do, who really gets sticky and it gets late in the fight, doesn't want to be there anymore. They're all factors as well. Ring IQ is one of them. Yeah, cool. How strong are you? How fast are you? How much do you want it? They're all factors as well. And in all of those areas, I've ticked those boxes many times over. You can pick a fight, you can when, see it. When? When did you have ticked them boxes? Apart from take, you took daft shots off a guy that came in, busted your nose, I'm talking about Gorman. And did you have to answer questions then from taking a few daft jabs? Yeah. What did you have to answer? Yeah. You took a few soft jabs. I got my nose split up, blood everywhere, and I still finished the fight. Oh, you had a little bit of blood, did you? It's still, it's still questions you've not answered. I've, I've, I've boxed with you got, 20 you got, your, you got your eyes split and you're counting that as a win. When? In the, in the Olympics, you've got a DQ and you're counting that as a win. What uh, are you talking about? Come on, Fabio, let's get your facts right. That's not what happened. I got the cuts, I got two cuts in their different fight. I got the DQ against the French kid. I went on and boxed with them cuts. I didn't have to find the dog because I took some daft shots. Yeah, so you carried on the fight with the cut, same as me, and won. Cool. Yeah, so the questions have been answered by both of us then? In the amateurs. In the amateurs, in the amateurs. In the amateurs. As, per, in, as in perfect, the, that's perfect round, sp spill from a guy that's not done the amateurs, who chose not to do the amateurs. And a lot of people are doing this in our days. I seen a 16-year-old the other day. Last time I seen him was boxing the amateurs um, near, near, in national semi-final. I looked the other day, he's doing this, what, he's champion of nothing. Champion of nothing, one of these little belts that you could have brought from Primark. Chose the easy way out. Belts and that, belts and that are irrelevant. If you, if you love and care for... No, them, them belts aren't if irrelevant. You love, if you love and care for the sport of boxing and you find any which way to do it, white collar or not, cool. I'm happy to support that. I'm happy to be an advocate of that. I'm happy to back that. No. I don't care if you do amateur. I don't care if you do white collar. If you appreciate and you love the sport and it's something you want to do and you want to find a way in boxing, if you can look to me and say, you know what, Fabio did that, I can do that, then cool, I will take that mantle. The same way you try and carry the ABA in your back and you run round to the gyms and you want to it's preach normal. to the kids about going through the amateur route, all my, all my part is saying, hey, there's a different way to do it. If you dedicate yourself, you commit yourself to the sport and you love boxing, there's a different way to do that. I'm not and saying, two belts on not the saying one's right or wrong. Are proof of that. I'm not saying one is right or wrong. I applaud you for what you've done. You know what? Somewhere in this white collar world, um, and they're all going to hate for me, it's the promoters, you're all making a few quid and say it's for charity. Do me a favour. Um, but listen, you've done well. I applaud the way you've got up there. I can't wait to fight you. We've shared, we've shared a little bit in the ring, so we know a little bit about each other. You can't take nothing from that. But um, you've seen a bit of me, I've seen a bit of you. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of each other. So when was that? Uh, probably a year ago. About a year ago. Six year rounds a year ago? Yeah. It's not that long ago. It's, it's, yeah, but since... I, you can't really take nothing. He's, in, he's improved massively since then from what I've seen. I know I have. It was, I think it was before the Camel fight. Um, yeah, so that was probably my worst performance as a pro yet. So um, you can't take much from it. I'll invite you just to give a final message to each other. Champion first. <laughs> Look, I respect you as a man, as a fighter, and your accomplishments, but it changes nothing for me. Ultimately, over the next eight, nine weeks, you're my enemy. I'm planning to take your head off and go home with my belts. Exactly that. The art of war, finally here. You know, I see Alan Babich down here. The war, the war machine and... Uh... Yeah, he's absolutely right. These situations, this is war. The next eight, nine weeks is very personal. Um, Fabio is all I think about, you know. Every time I go into a training session, you now it's all focused to beat him. May the best man win. And um, listen, just keep, keep having your jokes online. I'm sure you'll pick this apart, get the media team to pick it apart and <laughs> tweet the hell out of something, um, Instagram the hell out of something, make your T-shirts or whatever. But um, yeah. I hope you, hope you can back all that up on the night like you have so far.
Ben Shalom, just one final quick word. Uh, undercard and tickets. So undercard announcements are coming. Pre-sale went two days ago. Um, the tickets for this one will go through the roof. Ticket start at £30, 31st of March at the O2. Um, tickets available from today. But, yeah, a huge heavyweight clash, a huge undercard to follow as well, and a special night of British boxing. Yeah, so the date for your diary is Sunday, March 31st. You don't want to miss this one. Bad blood. We can't wait for it live on Sky Sports. We're going to break now for head-to-heads. If everybody stays seated, I think we're going to move some space just so you can all get your interviews and then everyone's available for one-on-ones afterwards. Thanks very much. Let me table my throw back. Back in the days, my bros, let me table my throw back. All the good memories I own, let me tape my throw back. I miss the young days now that I'm grown, let me tape my throw back. That was entertaining. That was entertaining. It never really caught fire, you might say. I was saying the tempers didn't fray too much, voices didn't really get raised, but. It was like watching two accomplished operators having a good move around, just looking for a few weaknesses there verbally. And nobody really found a comprehensive way in. Couldn't really let their hands go too much, but um, a good start. Yeah, I like the analogy there. Um, I think there was a bit of spite, but I think, I think what it comes down to as well is, I think they're both fairly you know, respectable guys. Do you know what I mean? Good guys, and no, no one was really going to be the first to lower the tone. You know, the, I think they're both up for reacting if someone wants to go first blood. But I don't think either one was really prepared to lower the tone. They're quite respectful of each other's. Uh, they, you know, they, they talk matter of fact, don't they? They don't. And and, and the reality is, they, they talked about a lot of sense there. They talked a lot of sense. You know, Fraser has done what he's done as an amateur, but also you've got to respect what Fabio's done. As a raw novice professional, you know, he's, but he's not a raw novice professional anymore. So that's kind of out the window now. He's, you know, he's, a, he's British champion now. He's defended. He's won the Commonwealth too. So, really, the white collar stories. That's kind of past, really. Now we're into the pro game, and he, he's the British champion. Yeah, I agree with that, and, and and that is the situation to an extent. What's gone up until this point? Their roots into the sport. It's. It's in a way not that relevant, but at the same time, it's just a really interesting kind of strand to pull on, isn't it? Because they are, they are just so, they're just so different. The T-shirt was entertaining. We'll get a good look at that when Fabio comes up to have a chat with us. I would imagine he's just away to our left-hand side now, and it says at the top, "Who's your daddy?" He's got a picture of Ben Shalom pushing a pram around with Fraser Clark in it, <laughs> essentially. So I was sort of expecting him to go down that road or a similar road to that but but as you say there is there is definitely respect between the pair of them because particularly at heavyweight this is true of any weight but particularly at heavyweight they know that one split second and either one could turn the other's lights out that that's that's the business you're in in this top division so I think everybody's always slightly mindful of that that you're both rolling that same dice and you can't help but respect each other for it yeah look there's um this could go 12 rounds and it could easily end inside the distance too. They both got power. Um, I think it will catch fire. I think it's a fight that'll definitely catch fire at some point. And uh, I think it'll live up to expectations. And they mentioned some of the some of the fights we've had for the British heavyweight title and some great, great names have, have won that belt in recent times. That fight between Joshua and and Dillian White was was the springboard really for Anthony Joshua to go on and become the fighter that he's become over the last 10 years I don't think anybody's going to want to break off from this one first how did you approach these face-offs because at some point you've got to get on with your day haven't you somebody's <laughs> got to look away first at some stage I always feel like when somebody puts a piece of paper between the two, which forces the issue, that's never a bad way to resolve it. But ultimately, nobody wants to look away first. No, exactly. And I think usually you kind of both mutually wait for somebody to step in. Generally, if you wait long enough, someone will step in because, like I say, you can't go on forever, can it? People have got things to do. But uh, no one, yeah, no one wants to be the one to, to look away first, unless, unless you kind of make it very obvious, like, oh, I'm done here. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's what Fabio did there. He just very swiftly very briskly just turned away to to his right hand side he's got those two belts over his shoulder that British title belt the Lord's Lonsdale challenge belt yeah belt is very proud of you can see that uh, 
he has come through the white collar and he will have heard a lot of people talking on the way up knocking you know doubting him and and and, and to be there now on, on this stage as the reigning and defending british champion i'd imagine he's very very proud of that okay here he comes here he comes with those with both of those two belts with with resplendent in the t-shirt which uh, I, I thought something was probably coming today ordered, don't worry it's coming <laughs> i thought something was probably coming today <laughs> we were just saying there as you were as you were taking part in the face-off that, that there is obviously a healthy amount of respect there between the two of you that there always is between professional fighters at, at any level but but particularly in the heavyweight division because mm. you both know you both know the jeopardy you both know what can happen in there it's a very very serious business and you're both committed to doing the same thing to each other basically yeah there's a lot of risk on the line and it takes a lot of of courage heart to to one step in the ring as a whole but as a heavyweight obviously the risk factor is is tenfold so um look we have our jibes we have our back and forths we have the fun and games with it all but there's a level of respect there like what he's done is is, is a great achievement but i just don't think it's the right time for him that's all one thing I was, I'm was i curious about, we, we spoke about this towards the end of last year, um, we were doing a little bit of work together, and the fact that you've never lost. Uh, okay, yeah. okay, you didn't have loads of white collar fights, but you had four and you won them all, and you've won them all as a pro as well. And what is that, kind of mentally, what is that like? The fact that it's never actually, this, this spectre of defeat, which looms over everybody, mm. it's just never happened. And every time you get in there, it's almost like you've got further to fall. It's like you're in this hot air yeah. balloon, but yeah, it's yeah. just always been yeah, rising. it's always going up. It's every fight, I'm further and further from the ground. And look, no one gets out of boxing unscathed, a loss, a knockout or something. It's probably coming at some point in my career, hopefully right at the end or something like that. But um, yeah, every, with, with every fight, it's a, it's a new amount of pressure, a new amount, of, a new height to fall from. But... That, that pressure does something for me. I mean, you can see that in my fights. I, it, it gives me another gear. It gives me another level to push through in moments where I've had to in the past. The pressure thing's interesting, Matt, isn't it? Because with Fabio, not that much was expected when he turned pro. Then he appeared on our radar and he was building, building, building. And he was kind of like gently immersed into warmer and warmer water in, 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 in a sense, if you ever can be a heavyweight. Whereas with Fraser, you turn pro with an Olympic bronze medal around your neck. People expect you to win a British title minimum. Without a doubt. And uh, I think Fabio said two things, can, two contradictory statements can both be true. You know, pressure is a privilege, but it's still pressure. Yeah. You know, yeah. it is, you know, yeah. you know, you you, you you want the pressure because you want to be in a stage where you've achieved and you're on uh, a place where people want to be take what you've got, but that that does bring pressure with it and, uh, and and people's expectations and his own expectations of what he'll have had in his career. But you know, Fabio will have his own pressure on himself because he he'll have his expectations. It doesn't matter about other people's expectations. He'll have his ex he knows what he's capable of and what he can do, and he'll have his expectations of where he sees his career going. Um, there's pressure on both of them. It's a, it's a fight that no one wants to lose this fight. Do you know what I mean? The reality is, and this is from experience being around a long time, it isn't going to be the end of the world for the loser. Do you know what I mean? Whoever loses here in a great fight can still go on and do great things. But it will be a step back and it'll be wounded pride and they'll be, you know what I mean? It won't be in a good place for until they get back up there. But uh, I'm just glad from, from, from working in the television point of view and the fan point of view that it's get, that we're seeing this fight that they haven't tried to go a different route uh, that they are fighting for it like I was saying when he was walking down you can see him very proud of those belts you know coming through the white collar probably hearing all the people over the years doubting him and knocking him he's proud of those belts big achievements become British and Commonwealth champion and you know Fraser Clark who's boxing Olympic Games he's yet to do it he's going to try and do it and this man's going to try and make sure he doesn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> big, big platform last time out. I, I was ringside for your fight against David Adelaide and Saudi. You really turned it on that night. You definitely feel like you're a big game player, don't you? And, and, yeah. and you know, live on Sky on, the, on a Sunday afternoon, bank holiday weekend, straight off the back of, you know, a big Premier League game, I understand. You know, that's, that gets your juices flowing. Yeah, it does, massively. Like I say, I've... Like I said on the stage, I've had the privilege of, of headlining, um, sorry, not headlining, of chief supporting to AJ Cards, Tyson Fury, Dylan White. So I've been part of those massive occasions. I love them. I thrive on them. And then to come back around almost full circle and, and headline the O2 myself on such a massive a massive fight that has had a lot of back and forth with it. There's been a lot of build up to it, which a lot of people have wanted. It's going to be 
it's going to be something special on the night. The people are going to be really roaring and I'm dying. I'm really dying and excited, really, to get back to UK fans and, and that, that night, that first bell and the roar of the crowd. How easy was it to get this made? Because this kind of snuck up on me. I, I didn't really know about this, to be honest with you, until last week. I knew it was, it was a possibility, but then all of a sudden, you know, it's there, it's made, it's done. Yeah, it wasn't... Um there's always, as, as fights of this, this size and stuff, there's always points to argue and, and little bits to go back and forth on. But to be honest, at this stage, it wasn't that hard to put together. Um, I think from however, from the backlash of the first time around, from their side, from, from Ben and from Fraser and that, they knew it had to happen. So it, it just kind of had to be a smooth transition of, look, we can't, we can't fuss around with this again like we did before. It has to get done. OK, we'll let you go. Good to see you as always. Cheers, we'll we'll see you. you. Pleasure. We'll next see you in fight week. I'd imagine the Sky cameras will, uh, will peek into the gym at, at, at some stage. All the best. Hope you turn up fit and raring to go on the night. So Fraser Clark is just going to sidle in and join us. One thing I particularly enjoy about these press conferences, particularly when you've got, when you've got two big heavyweights, they're kind of circling around each other and nobody ever wants to let either one of them too close to the other one. That was all pretty civilised up there, which I thought it would be, to be honest with you, because you're two kind of seasoned campaigners now, aren't you? But I was saying to Matt, it was almost like you were having a little move around, just looking for a few openings and nobody wanted to give too much away. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to be boring, Andy, by any stretch of the imagination, but like I alluded to, you know, I think the place we're at in boxing now... You see a lot of people doing more at a press conference than, than they're doing a fight. A table, a chair, start insulting each other's family, each other's mothers. It's not the way I am. It's not the way I was brought up. Um, I'm, in this, I'm in this business for the competitive nature and to go on and win titles and, and get accolades. Um, I've got no interest in, in trying to make it something that it's not. One thing that always interests me about when you have a matchup where you've got a fighter with the kind of background you've got and somebody who doesn't have it, whether it's because they didn't really do much in the amateurs or because they did white collar, people like to kind of paint this GB setup as being, you know, you're all up there in your ivory tower, in your silk pyjamas, eating with your silver spoons. But it's tough. It's so tough. World Series boxing training camps in Kazakhstan. You know, there's, there's nothing easy about international amateur boxing. I try to explain this to people and it take me a long time to get their point across but a lot of a lot of pros that turned that have been in pro boxing for years and let, sort of everyone sort of forgets the amateur boxing I might see the odd show here and there but you know when you talk about the international boxing um, you know yourself because you've been around the world it's very brutal it's very physical it's very full on so you know I think anyone that thinks it's still point scoring and pitter patter with a white bit on the end of the glove they're a million miles away I'm not saying it's professional boxing because it is quite simply not but it's definitely not as far away as it was the point scoring we work on a 10-9 scoring system um, the, the gap was definitely bridged a few years ago yeah he's, he's there's a lot more seasoning there than 8-0 and o, basically oh yeah of course we said that before didn't we he said he's had how many World Series of WSB fights did you have? Nine and no, no, very proud. They're not pro a, fights yeah. over five rounds. Yeah, that, they? That's an outstanding uh, record. Uh, in that some, some, some good names on there as yeah, well. You know, so there's, you know, you, all, all he's lacked is it, you're the more experienced guy in boxing. You just don't have, you didn't have the rounds, and, and you, the you need the dance partner as well, Matt. You yeah, know, yeah. I, I don't feel like I, I've, I've quite had that yet. Um, this is definitely the one. You know, he's going to come to win, and he, like you said, you know, I don't think. Marius Wack had, had, had a second in, in the fight where he thought, oh, I'll, I'll, but, but he survived. I'll, didn't gonna, he? he was survivor. He, survived, he, survived. he landed one jab and thought, oh, I'll have a go. And then after that, he went back into the shell. Yeah. So it, it's difficult at the beginning of your career. It's very hard to look good against guys that are coming to survive, especially guys like Wack who have been around, they're tough, they're durable. They can get through the rounds, you know what I mean? It's very difficult. You don't get many clean openings because they're not punching back here enough. Um, you got, but you got the 10 rounds. So even just mentally, psychologically, you've ticked that box. You know, because this fight could easily go 10 or 12 rounds, you know, and then all of a sudden you're in, you know, you're in a fight and you've never been there before. You know, doubts can creep in, but you have been there before, uh, albeit at a, you know, a lesser opponent. It's different, but I think what I've learned over the last 12 months was it, it wasn't even them, them 18 rounds with Wack and Dave Allen, 17, 18 rounds, that wasn't where the learning was done and, and maturity was It was in the camps. It was like, it was, you know, we can go on about the purse being pulled out. Was it right? Was it wrong? 
I'm not saying it was right or wrong. What I'm telling you is, it gave me a chance to uh, to broaden my horizons, to broaden my knowledge, to understand doing a camp. Uh, to do a camp for a 10 rounder was different to the camps I was doing for the six rounders. And then to do it again with Dave Allen, and now to do a camp for a 12 rounder, it sort of bridged the gap a bit. Yeah. And also now, you know, you're headlining. You're, you're headlined, you headlined at your call that time, but this is different. You know, it's a different, a different kind of a different kind of level altogether. What, what do you make of him? Because he is quite unusual stylistically for a, for a heavyweight. He's, he's athletic. Um, he throws punches from, from strange angles. He does appear to have properly heavy hands. It, it took me a while to figure him out, to be honest, because some of the stoppages he had, I looked out and thought, I don't, what, what happened there? I, nothing seemed to really land particularly or not heavy enough to, to precipitate the finish we got. And then after a while, I think I just accepted that he must be a hard puncher. I think he punches hard. I don't think he's a one-punch knockout artist. Um, touch Woody, ain't. I think he's. I think he punches hard, and the thing he does well for a heavyweight is he throws a lot of shots. You know, he'll put his punches together. Um, really good finisher, um, as as we've seen in a lot of his fights. Um, he can really go through the gears. He's a fit guy, an athlete. Um, like I said, I'm not taking nothing away from him. I think he's a good fighter, and by far the hardest fight of my career so far. But that's what you want, isn't it? You feel like the timing of this is right because a problem for a top international amateur can be stagnation because the reality is that the people you are boxing in the Olympics and at World Championships and European Championships, in the later stages, definitely, they would all be better than everyone you've boxed so far. And you don't want to be treading water. No, you don't. And, and the, the difficult thing is, you know, we have this... I have this argument you know all the time you know about the amateurs and the pros being different 100 percent. I'm, I'm not saying they're not different what i'm telling you is like you said you know the competition before it was competition i went into every fight nervous because it, there were 50 50s a lot, and a lot of the time you might have been up against it you're fighting in someone's home country uh, but now i'm talking as a pro I've, you've been you're sort of spoon fed at the beginning and people aren't going to hear that and people didn't want to see it because I've took a lot of stick for, for actually doing them fights but it's part of my job um, but these are the fights where people say you know what we've not we've not seen enough from him yet to know where he is when he's put in front of someone like Fabio Woodley this, this is it's a funny one because he's fighting for the British and Commonwealth title but this is probably his first real fight as a professional I'd, I'd say so you know like I say this is the this is going to sound bad and unprofessional on me this is the one that makes you get up out of bed this is the one that that makes you study. This is the one that makes you go to bed early. This is the one that makes you make the right choices with nutrition. Um, this is the one because there's a lot of pride, not just just because it's the British Commonwealth title. We're both proud men, you know. Um, we're both up and coming, but I always say this in pro boxing, sort of winner stays on. We, we, I want to go to the next level. I don't see this as my ceiling. I see this as just part of the journey. Okay, well, we'll let you go there. Thanks very much for coming over. Best of luck in camp. Hope we see you fight week fit and raring to go and same for him because that's what everybody wants on, on March the 31st. Sunday afternoon, some Sunday boxing. Cannot wait for it. OK, that wraps things up in uh, Liverpool Street for today for the Bad Blood press conference. Wasn't too much bad blood in the end, but, you know, there's time. There's time yet. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you again next time. <laughs>